punished for blowing myself up because they shot me in the stomach. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey Quincy, can you try and get in the in church road and kill that yeah. Gary? Um, I just killed everybody in the half track. So I'll try. I know some of you want my opinion on update 15, and we'll get to it. But for now, I'm going to skip over it, just like Microsoft did with Windows 9. It's honestly not worth putting an ounce of effort into, since Team 17 didn't feel the need to put much effort into update 15. With that said, We're taking a German opening! Today's video is going to go over some fundamental changes to Hell Let Loose that would significantly improve the gameplay and longevity of great matches. A few of these topics are in direct reference to how the game used to be before it became a softcore arcade shooter. Quality of life is what this game lacks, and the bugs. But I'm not going to focus so heavily on the bugs this time. First up is... Bring back the one minute buffer on capping an objective. Why is this important? Because most players to this day seem to think this game is Battlefield Conquest and they think that they can just run back to the objective to help cap once it's lost. Once you lose an objective, how often is an enemy just camping on the next objective, which starts to cap instantly? This type of gameplay loop is literally a waste of time, and seemingly anyone who is paying attention to the map is always waiting on the next point to cap. For some reason, players seem to think the only place for action is on the attacking objective, but then why are you losing? Hmm, weird. If that's the case, then by bringing back the one minute cap buffer will help players to realize what's going on and react accordingly. Time and time again we have matches that last 15 minutes, mostly because people are not paying attention to the map or don't realize that it takes 50 seconds to run one square and only 120 seconds to cap an objective. If you are 1.5 squares away from the circle, how long will it take you to run there? Add 30 seconds if it's on foy. Now add one minute to that. Your chances of survival have increased greatly, which keeps the game on the front line where every single player wants to be. Shit. Looking for an OP and almost walked right past it. Oh, oh, oh sorry, dude. Uh, the handgun's such a good weapon, dude. Number two, fix the goddamn MG mounting. This is by far the most passed off issue with the game. It's been three years since MGs could mount properly, and it's something that every single player experiences, yet Team 17's resources are dry, and they just ignore it. To be fair, Black Matter messed it up and never found a fix, but Team 17 was going to put sprinkles on the game and make it everything we ever dreamed of. Just a reminder, it's 2024 and this game has been out since June of 2019. Dick do the yeah, they're in front of you. Yeah, I shot a rocket. I think I got two guys in the trash. Yeah, it, they're all in the trash. There's a lot of grenades. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Triple headshot with the fucking handgun. Number three. Fix the fucking hit reg. Why in a what? game with a very low TTK do enemies act like bullet sponges? Maybe I'm confused yeah. on what an FPS entails. But I thought it involved me shooting a player, a then they die. Shit, so Maybe I'm just confused on this one, but I'm really tired of shooting an enemy multiple times Apparently, and they just turn around and one-shot me. Gunfights have become a 50-50 guess as to who's going to come out on top, especially at distances under 10 meters. There are companies right now working on multi-server maps where you can shoot objects that are on a completely different server. But Hell Let Loose remains this broken code living in broken servers with trails of broken pieces living in our PCs. I know I've covered this glaring issue for almost a year since update 13.5 launched, but for the love of all things holy, if I shoot an enemy first, then they must die first. It's a simple notion that makes FPS games a genre in the first place. Sure, a one-off situation is eventually going to cause an issue, but when I am using a rifle that is designed to be a one-hit kill below 200 meters, then it better work on your defined specs. And when it doesn't, there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Any player can gather the info needed to see this, even in a single match. Just use a Car 98 or Garand, 
or even the Springfield or Car 98 sniper variants to see the issue in real time. Long range sniper weapons are supposed to be a one hit kill to 500 meters. The other rifles are a one hit kill under 200 meters. But if you check your hits versus kills at the end of a match, you will see how off these metrics are to the actual specified TTK. Once players notice how unpredictable the hit reg is, it can be the most frustrating experience. <laughs> Number 4. Tanks. I almost never get in a tank, as I prefer blowing them up. But this two-hit linear level of gameplay is not interesting, especially for those who came from other tank games. All tanks basically fire at the same rate, so it's a who shot who first without taking into play that every tank has a weakness and should be remodeled to reflect that. It's just another boring gameplay loop that hasn't seen an upgrade in years and would bring a ton of attention to the game if implemented. I'm right next to enemy tank, good guys. Yep, gotcha. Got one hit on him. Nice. Let's see if he turns around to, him. to get you. Is he turning around or no? Uh, yes. I got one hit on him, but I'm following him right now, so we can keep track of him. Yep. He's in a circle around him. I'm gonna hold off a minute. Is he still trying to get you? No, he's just driving around. Okay. I gotta wait to see his ass. Twin City, is there a uh, Panther around the tank mark over there? Not anymore. Number five, artillery. This is probably the biggest complaint about the game, and for very good reason. Not only was there a promise way back in the Kickstarter for mortar squads, but nobody enjoys getting spammed by artillery every 40 seconds on the dot while someone uses an artillery calculator and presses two buttons to get kills. Back in the day, artillery used to destroy spawn points, and the players understood how vulnerable they were and how important it was to keep building garrisons. Artillery wasn't able to spam garrisons because they would disappear, and then artillery would have to rely on new marks. It's a simple change that really fucked this game up, and to be honest, I'm tired of it. I get it was a part of real life, but remove it. Set it to a commander ability that has a limited open time, or remove it and bring in mortar squads like everybody wants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is thick as fuck right now. Oh my god, that guy's like... That was pretty good. Oh my god, dude, that guy probably thinks I'm cheating. <laughs> Number six. Medics. This has needed a change for quite some time, and I know exactly how to fix it. First, add dragging downed players. While some of you might not agree with this and see this as useless, I can assure you that for the medic, it adds a level of realism and buys you a little more time on getting revived, which helps prevent your manpower numbers from depleting on respawn. On a quick note, remove punishing a player for throwing grenades on a downed player. It didn't exist long ago and doesn't need to exist now. He's dead, and medics are irrelevant. Another thing you can do to make medics relevant again is allow the medics to run faster than everyone else. This makes them harder to hit, and harder to predict, and more successful. Make the role fun to play, and people will play it. It's that simple. One more aspect to help the medic class is to give them more ammo and better weapons. I personally do not care about historical accuracy anymore in this game. That went out the window a long time ago. The only thing that should remain accurate historically is the maps. On a side note, not a single person cares if the Germans didn't use an STG-44 and El Alamein. This is a video game and not real life. Allow all playable guns to be used, and quit fucking around with half-ass attempts that attempt to please no one. Just give the medic a comparable amount of ammo, a Gewehr or SVT, and make the medic fun again. There's a bunch of infantry uh, northwest of A. I just killed them. Ooh. I got Number seven. Speaking of TTK, 
Hell Let Loose has a damage model that is so basic, Doom from 1993 would be jealous. Back in the day, every rifle was a one-hit kill, even to the pinky toe. Now while that was fun, and rewarded great shooting, the game used to also feature mainly rifles, and it was rare that every gun interaction was against an SMG. While I would like to return to that, players with major skill issues in shooting would not like the change even though it would promote better skill and reward for doing so. I would like to see the damage models change to this. Full-size rifles, one hit kill to 300 meters. This includes the Garand and Car 98 and the equivalent in the Russian and British rifles. Keep the snipers as they are, one hit up to 500 meters. As far as the carbine goes, and assuming that historical accuracy doesn't matter anymore, I think the carbine and the Gewehr 43 need the same damage model just for gameplay balance across factions. I would like to see the Carbine, some of you will be using the Carbine, the Gewehr 43, and the SVT-40, and the equivalent across factions be a one-hit kill below 150 meters. This would make rifles more prevalent on the battlefield. A little reminder that nobody in the history of ever has gotten hit by a carbine and shrugged it off. And in Hell Let Loose, it shouldn't be that way either. The gap between TTK at distance from the carbine to the grand will lend itself to applying more pressure on the battlefield, as in when someone hears a full-size rifle go off, they should be legitimately scared of its power and deadliness. This also promotes more rifle gunplay, which, funny enough, is historically accurate. SMGs need two classes, mid-range SMG and short-range SMG. For instance, the STG-44 and the BAR need to be a one-hit kill below 100 meters, two hit kill below 200 meters, and three hit kill beyond 200 meters. And for guns such as the Thompson, PPSH, and MP40, these need to be a two hit kill below 75 meters, a three hit kill between 76 and 125 meters, and a four hit kill between 126 and 175 meters, with a five hit kill beyond 175 meters. While this is a change in TTK, it's only a change in distance to kill which sets up the battlefield for the right gun for the right situation. The last issue is the MGs. This is a tough one because I know from experience that the MG42 has gotten secretly nerfed over the years. Just look at your hits to kill ratio and remember, trucks take 50 bullets to blow up. I've had matches where I've gotten 900 hits and ended up with 45 kills. This issue has got to be ironed out as MGs played a vital function in World War II. For the MG42 and the M1919, I think the TTK should remain the same, but since the rate of fire is faster than other guns in the game, it should follow this damage model. Two hit kill under 100 meters. Three hits from 101 meters to 150 meters. Four hits at 151 meters to 200 meters. And five hit kill beyond 200 meters. This model might seem a bit odd, but is based on the way players use this type of weapon. You have the spray and pray, which is used most often, and you have the other players who enjoy hip fire. On a side note, the penalty you get for ADS to hip fire needs to be removed. This was added a long time ago in update 9, which is the same update that ruined mounting. Back in the day, it was the MG's job to clear out those houses of enemies, and that stopped when the ADS slowdown penalty was added. The MG rolls for Russia and Britain need to have different damage values, as they are basically completely different guns that are far less effective, so they need a buff. The DP-27 and the Lewis gun needs a bit lower TTK, as they are not equivalent in the balance of the game. I would like to see them follow this model. 2 hit kill under 100 meters, 3 hit kill from 101 meters to 200 meters, and a 4 hit kill beyond 200 meters. Again, this is aimed at balance, not real-life ballistic specs, because this is a game, not a hardcore shooter like Arma. While you're at it, center and resize the British weapons. It's a stain on your design choices and congruency across the rest of the game. Oh my god, I'm stuck. I don't even know where that fucking guy is. Try 
At number eight, we have suppression. Hell Let Loose uses a Gaussian blur for suppression, and it's just annoying and ineffective. MGs should suppress a ton and make you unable to fire accurately, because that's what suppression is. Suppression was nerfed way back in Update 10, when console launched. And while this might be for performance reasons, negating core aspects of what makes a game fun should never be reverted to net a couple of frames. Maybe focus on the assets in the game, like the bridge elements that have 170,000 triangles for a single beam. Suppression is suppression, and should scare the player into submission, and only those with a death wish should be firing back. These changes alone would align Hell Let Loose back into the harder core FPS genre. Number 9. Sniper Reticles Why are they dirty? Most of you might not know, but way back in Update 4 or 5, the decision was made to cut out the peripheral vision when ADS when using a sniper rifle. This game has progressed a lot since then in the form of performance, and we need to see it brought back. It wasn't removed for balance, so it needs to come back. over here now. Number 10. Remove Red Zone Garrisons. Update 6 pissed people off with ninja garrisons that didn't have a radius lock. Update 7 got rid of them but added airheads. Then Update 9 brought back Red Zone Garrisons with radius lock and kept airheads. This has had a tarnishing effect on the gameplay. The game used to be a frontline battle, where kills and confidence helped take an objective. You could still get behind enemy lines with an airhead and OPs, and currently, red zone garrisons can really screw over the team when total noobs place a garrison one meter into the red, or place them too close to an objective. This ruins garrison placement and opportunities, since also during Update 9, garrison placement distance was changed to 200 meters, when it used to be 100 meters, and you could place 10 garrisons on the map, not 8 like we currently have. I don't understand how the fucking OP's at. There's gotta be someone laying. I bet he's all the way up here on the border. Just being a little bitch. Number 11. Nodes. I would like to see one of two things happen here. Either bring back the ability of a single engineer being allowed to build all three sets of nodes, or bring back the old node system of having them worth more the further they are built into enemy territory. I know there's people who will build all sets of nodes if allowed to, which promoted better gameplay and a faster way to rank up. Back in the day, getting a squad to go deep into enemy territory to build up nodes was a risk and exhilarating. This wasn't a disadvantage back in the day even if you were losing or on your last point, because you most likely still have nodes way back in the backfield where nobody is looking for them. Losing nodes after losing an objective is nothing but an attempt to shorten the game length. If people still after years cannot be bothered to build garrisons, then why would they build nodes, let alone build them again? People have to use a margin on the second sector just to drop supplies from a truck and then run back to build in the first sector adding a level of nuance that's just not needed. Removing the power of the commander makes the commander want to leave the sinking ship when there's nothing they can do to rectify the situation, literally leaving the team to fend for themselves and most likely lose. It's silly, so change it. The best battles ever fought in this game were the ones that lasted the entire match.
In closing, this game could still be great and worth its current inflated price tag, but the direction it's gone over the years has catered to the players that have less than 50 hours in the game, which isn't just some mystery tactic used in the gaming industry, and even they know, you aren't going to learn how to let loose in 50 hours, let alone notice the issues with the game before the two hour return window is up. It's just short term business plans, get in, get out, and hopefully we make money. And I know. Activision makes double the profit on its DLC than it does its games, but Hell Let Loose wasn't built with that system in mind. There's only so many outfits you can add until the history police show up, which I hear you, and I understand, to an extent. Hell Let Loose is a game that I have a love-hate relationship with. I love the team play when cohesive, the shooting mechanics, and especially the headshot sound. But I hate the destruction of the hit reg, the overzealous roadmap, which 180'd into an apathetic roadmap, and most of all, the lack of transparency and the shutdown of its communication with its new and diehard players. They were so excited to show us the new faces of Team 17 working on Hell Let Loose, with amazing sounding changes coming to the game, with a focus on performance, and a bump in the cost, of course. But instead, threw these devs under the bus with some bad ideas that were never sold to us, nor did we ask for. Imagine being pumped to work on a cool project, and then in one week the awful decision to change the run speed with zero quality control was released. And the shitstorm ensued. And now you're the one dolphin diving and doing maintenance work on a game with no exciting future that allows you to shine in your skills in as a developer. One wrong move, which unfortunately great. happened to be the first move, and they lost that creative freedom we were all sold on. These days, the hit reg is so hit or miss, I feel like I have to fight the game as much as I have to fight the players. I understand that making a game that more people can enjoy will generate more money, but when over 1 million copies have been sold and production has been halted, we will never get the same experience we once enjoyed and paid for, nor will we get the exciting future the devs once had in store. We've taken a gem in OP! is a fucking meme, yeah, and a damn good one. T-posing and floating arms in the distance is exactly where we are as a community that loves Hell Let Loose, and unfortunately, a publisher that isn't trying to bring out more of what's great about Hell Let Loose. Team 17 should have built upon what was already there and working well, but instead they decided to fuck around and find out. A move they may never recover from, as is evident by the lack of content shutdown of communication, and forward momentum. Hell Let Loose needs innovation and reasonable ideas that make the game more interesting and challenging strategically. For those who've been with me for a long time, I've always appreciated your support, and I think you all understand where I'm coming from here. For those who are new, I must say that I have posted a couple hundred videos relating to Hell Let Loose regarding all of its issues and some of the best moments you can have in game, and I'm glad that you're here. I am too brutally honest for most people, which comes off as arrogant to 10-ply personalities. But I am passionate about this game, even though I want to put it in a rear naked choke sometimes. And while my opinions about what this game needs are my own, I have researched this game's history and started playing back in Update 7. I've spent thousands of hours in game, thousands of hours in video editing, and thousands of hours of reading endless and hopeful Reddit, Steam, and Discord posts. I am tired of this game going nowhere with no future, other than a revolving door of new players where the experienced ones are the only ones playing the actual game so the other 80% can fuck around with weak pushes, overextending, and playing it like it's Battlefield Conquest. Gamers deserve better than just being a wallet to steal from, but we also need to speak with our wallets. Hell Let Loose is fun, with a squad or friends even better, but it has major issues that have been purposely overlooked because new players don't see the faults, and that's exactly the type of customer Team 17 wants. One that's too new to care, and too blind to see the issues. Oh, you get 30 FPS on recommended specs? Go to the Discord where the knowledgeable ones will tell you that there's something wrong with your PC. Oh, you found a guide on YouTube that helped you get more stable performance but still having a stuttering issue? You must revert your PC back to lower FPS and shittier graphics for best performance. Because it's not the game's fault. It's your fault, Brokey. Go build a new PC and get over it. Oh, your game fails to launch and crashes constantly? We need your DXDiag file. Okay, here you go. Okay, see, here's the problem. 
Your GPU driver is on 551.76 and we're on 551.86. See how our number is bigger than your number? That's the issue we would fix first. We'll help you as much as we can though. Wink, wink. Oops, that didn't work. You might have to uninstall and reinstall the game. Have you verified the integrity of the game files? Have you turned your system off for 60 seconds and turned it back on? Have you tried resetting your router? Have you made sure you left open a back door to your wallet so we can farm more of your money from you? Ah yes, the new near miss DLC. Oh my god, I can't wait to not see it in game. Is it really too much to ask that we get a white arm sleeve so we can tell if we have our winter uniform on without someone else having to tell us? I stated after the launch of Update 14 that it would be at least a year until Team 17 gets this game back on track. And we are almost on a year, with another six months of zero content and zero fucks to be given. The things Team 17 has done to this game to change its identity has backfired so hard and still continues to disappoint, all due to not addressing community issues with the game. Originally, Hell Let Loose sat in the harder core military FPS genre, under postscriptum, but far enough away from Battlefield to keep the game in its own lane. Skirmish mode should have been the training mode. The best community servers to play on do not have it in their map rotation, as it doesn't offer any actual new gameplay, except for a shorter timer, which I'd argue that warfare mode has even shorter matches, with the possibility of having a great match. Skirmish is hell at loose light. Mortain, while it's a cool map, has many issues, like performance when ADS with bullets and artillery being stopped by trees. The trees also have bounding boxes wider than the trunks, just like every wall of every building on Stalingrad. To this day, I would not recommend anyone to buy this game at full value. Buy it at a discount and get a couple of friends to all play it together. Maybe you haven't noticed, but on Steam, Hell Let Loose has secretly gone up in price after the latest Steam Spring sale, and for no reason other than greed. They certainly didn't add value, and what happens after the next update? Maybe raise the price $5 more? Then update 17 comes out and $5 more? Not a good look. The game is currently $50. This game should remain at $35 tops. To ask for more implies that current development is on the way. It's not, and never will be. In fact, you have not taken a German OP. And if you had, this video wouldn't exist. Dick, I just killed a guy over here. They're coming from that southeast area. Yeah, their supply truck came through here, so they probably built, dropped and built something. But he was over in here and shot me, but I killed him all ago. I got picked off over here. And now I'm stuck against a tree. I can't even aim down sight properly. 